Um, the guy had a sign. Driving for dollars is when you just get in your car, ride, you got your notepad. Now, this is the old fashioned way. I used to drive on every Saturday and Sunday. I go through every corridor. I get off on the exit. I ride the corridor. Then I get back on the exit. I get off and I ride the next corridor looking for deals, writing it down, sending them handwritten melodies. Well, now, what, are, what are some signs that someone might see to say, okay, let me write this address down? What sticks out? Any signs of abandonment, high grass, filled, uh, loaded mailbox, bad roof, the blue tarp on the roof. That means they ain't got enough money to fix the roof. You know, different little signs like that. You know, vacant land, you know, those type of signs. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm out looking for looking for um, product driving for dollars. So now you said something different. You said that you sent a FedEx mailer. Usually people ain't sending no FedEx mailer to a to a um, prospect. They'll write a letter or they'll have a yellow a yellow card or they'll write a letter and mail it with an envelope. You got a tracking system when you do yours. Why? And it costs more money. That's that's that ain't cheap. Yeah. So if y'all can remember this concept, it's called zebras and cheetahs. Look different, run faster. Zebras and cheetahs. Look different, run faster. How can I stand out from everybody else who's sending these we buy houses mailers? Okay. All right. So this is the way I'm gonna sit. this is this is the way I'm gonna sell, uh, stand out. For one, those we buy houses little postcards. That's a, that's a shotgun blast. You send five, ten thousand of those out, and you just hope some shit come back. With my FedEx campaign, it's a sniper campaign. Sniper, like you sniping, you driving for dollars, and you send these FedEx mailers to people who you roll by. You you physically seen it, like it's not a, it's not a, it's not a hope, wish, and a prayer. You know what I'm saying? The thing about it, the FedEx mailers cost ten dollars plus, depending on where you sending it. And another thing, they gonna open. Everybody opens FedEx. I don't give a fuck if you wasn't even expecting it. You gonna open a FedEx mailer because the price of a FedEx mailer is too expensive for spam. Gotcha. So they know you serious. Right. So now I know you open it. My LOI is short and sweet, so I know you read it. My business card. I got the metal business card. Mm. That stands out too. It's not the it's not the Vista print you can get 50 for fucking 5,000 uh, cars. You know what I'm saying? You just spam everybody. You know, with these with these metal business cars, you're getting 100 for $500. Mm -hmm. So you got to strategically put these things out. But the thing about it is, going back to zebras and cheetahs, everything is different. The FedEx Miller is different. The paper that the LOI on is different. It's not the regular paper. It's the hard paper. You know what I'm saying? My business card is different. It's metal. So now, when I'm saying hey, I want to buy your, I want to buy your building, you're like, hey, man, this dude's serious, and you're not gonna throw my business card away because it's metal. So you, I know you write your own deals. How do you, how do you underwrite your own deal? What does that process look like? So when I'm underwriting a deal, let's say if I'm underwriting a flip, it's a couple key factors I'm looking for: what I'm buying it for, what I'm rehabbing it for, what the ARV is. How long is it going to take me to finish this job? You know what I'm saying? And when I underwrite deals, I underwrite on worst case scenarios, not best case scenarios. You know what I'm saying? Even, even the tiny home project, we underwrote it on worst case scenarios. It's very conservative how we underwrote the deal. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I just feel like one, because if you don't understand a deal, if you don't understand how to recognize a deal, you don't know what you're looking at. That goes back to that land that we built this six million dollar development on. It expired on the market twice. Mm. You know why? For one, they didn't see value in it. For two, they didn't know how to underwrite a deal for the highest and best use of that land. The city of College Park ain't do us no favors. They was against what we was trying to do too. We had to convince them. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to convince them. The highest and best use was right there. Twenty, we could put twenty nine units right here, but it, it expired. Oh, we put it with another realtor. It expired again. Nobody wanted it. It's like the ugly duckling. Nobody wanted it. 
Right. But now everybody like, man, I can't believe, I can't believe you got that land for 155. When in reality, we overpaid for it. And I knew we was overpaying, but I understand how it's in best use. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. Yeah.